What's up everyone? Leo again, talking about real estate. This time we're gonna talk about Chicken McNuggets. I know you love them, my favorite's barbecue. We're gonna talk about McDonald's, all right? And you know I've done a lot of TikTok videos joking around about McDonald's being a real estate company. So I'm here to make a video because everyone keeps asking me about it and it's popular. So well, let's talk about real estate and why McDonald's is a real estate company, not a hamburger company. Yes, it's true. They make more money on their real estate than they do on their hamburgers. So as you know, McDonald's has 35,000 plus locations. They feed 1% of the world every day, which is ridiculous. And they make more money in real estate than their hamburgers. They have over $30 billion with a B in real estate holding. And they're the largest, one of the largest commercial real estate owners in the world. And as you know, if you haven't noticed, like they're in like prime locations. They're in like in the in right in Midtown, Manhattan. They're in they got phenomenal spots. What they did was back in the day, Ray Kroc wasn't making money with his with his hamburger shops. So he hired a guy called Harry Sanbon and he became the key to McDonald's success. He's the one who envisioned it as a real estate company, then a fast food company. And that's how they started making really a lot of money with McDonald's. In the 50s, each restaurant required a land parcel. So franchisees needed to finance the land in order to build a restaurant. But the restaurants weren't making any money to pay the debt on the land. So Kroc was forced to build one store at a time. So, you know, banks imposed on real estate acquisitions and Kroc couldn't get financing and he had to find another way. So Mr. Sanban, he saw the writing on the wall and he started a totally new way to do it. McDonald's would lease the whole site from each restaurant, including the land, from the owner. And rather than purchasing the parcel outright, McDonald's would sublease it back to the franchisee and who would manage the restaurant. So McDonald's basically proved a consistent revenue stream and acquired a mortgage to purchase both land and building. And if you know that now, I think you need like $5 million to buy a franchise, which is very expensive, but it's the same thing now. The strategy that Sanban created allowed Kroc to buy out the McDonald brothers in 1961 for 2.7 million, which is nothing, right? By 1963, there was 500 McDonald's open. That's unbelievable. And these are probably in like absolutely phenomenal areas, I would assume. I mean, I know one up the block that I did a TikTok about. I was speaking to the owner and he knocked down, it was an old 70s McDonald's. It had like the playroom in it with the rides. And he's like, you know, I can't get anybody to work at $25 an hour. So he knocked it down. The, he's going to redesign the drive through to support more cars going through. They can have a couple of people in the back and that's it. And when you walk in, you're just going to have to scan out your own stuff. So they're automating a lot of stuff. $25 an hour, we couldn't get anybody to work for them. But anyway, so today, the Franchise Realty Corporation is one of the largest commercial real estate owners in the world. It owns $28.4 billion worth of land before depreciation. And compared to the largest real estate investment firms in America, McDonald's is probably next to companies like Blackstone, Star Capital, and Lone Star Funds. Blackstone is like, you know, they're like the Death Star with the, they're the Darth Vader of, uh, they're horrendous. They're the worst hedge fund company in the world. They want to buy up every piece of real estate in the world and screw the, the American guy. So a typical franchise deal, this is how it works. So it's basically McDonald negotiates with the landlord directly. They spend about 9,000 a month for rent. They charge a franchise fee of 8.5% for monthly restaurant revenues. And a restaurant creates about 200,000 in revenue per month. And eight and a half percent of that to more than 17,000 a month in fees, which the franchise pays back to McDonald's. These fees only comfortably cover the lease expense on the site, but create profit for McDonald's. Again, in 2015, McDonald's rent liability was 1.6 billion. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And they collected almost 10 billion in rent. That's unreal. I mean, that's just unbelievable. So, you know, as you know, I think it's like 10,000 a month right now for a storefront. I mean, it's so insanely ridiculous. Like the McDonald's are making like 100% like profit on renting out their space with the franchise fee. They have a phenomenal like just equation on how they make money. So next time you go for Chicken McNuggets, just know that you're paying for rent. 
to McDonald's because they're a real estate company, right? So it's kind of cool. But that tells you something. Like a lot of people who became really wealthy, they had either had a job, and this is a statistic you can look up. People who became wealthy in real estate, it's a slow thing. You're not just gonna go and you're gonna become a real estate investor and you're gonna make money. Like you hear all these stories about, oh, I'm a wholesaler, I became a multimillionaire. Yeah, it takes time. Like, you know, you, you need to, Invest time, you buy one property, appreciation, take that money, refinance, or reinvest in another one, get more cash flow. It's a slow process, it's not overnight. Or you either have to have a job, like you make 200,000. The average real estate investor was had a job first. So these are the things that you need to do. Anyway, so back to McDonald's. So that's the whole gist of how McDonald's works. Hope you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, and if you have any questions, leave it back in the comments.